Militarily speaking, the blast tube isn't new. This 1957 drawing of a French-made AA-20 air-to-air missile shows two blast tubes surrounded by electronics. This drawing of a French and German surface-to-air missile from 1968 called Roland shows boost motors clustered around a blast tube for the sustainer motor, an interesting configuration that could very easily be adapted for amateur use. Military blast tubes are basically an extension of the combustion chamber with the nozzle at the end of the tube. Using PVC for engine casings makes this difficult at best. The purpose of the blast tube in my rocket is to push the weight of the engine forward while preventing the exhaust gases from damaging the rocket body. Putting the nozzle at the end of the blast tube would not be as effective as adding a blast tube to the end of the nozzle. The blast tube I decided to test used the proven nozzle design of the K450 engine with the inch and a half nozzle insert extended 12 inches to form the blast tube. Unfortunately on this test the exhaust gases cut right through the ABS. It was too close to the nozzle. I still think this design will work, I just have to increase the diameter of the ABS so it's further away from the nozzle. For the next test, I decided to take the K450 nozzle, add an inverted and trimmed reducing bushing, a PVC coupling on top of that with 12 inches of 2 inch ABS, and then drill 8 3 8 inch vent holes through the ABS and PVC to allow cool air to be entrained into the blast tube and temper the exhaust. This time, it worked perfectly. That was awesome. Great test. In the past, I've made parachutes from plastic drop cloth material with good results. It's a cheap, low-tech solution, but I've never tested them to see how much punishment they can actually take. I decided to release the parachute behind a truck at various speeds to see how far I could push it. At 20 miles per hour, the parachute opened perfectly, a small O-ring stopping the chute from popping open. At 30 miles an hour, without the O-ring, the chute lost one line. All right. Again at 30 miles an hour, without the O-ring, the chute opened hard, straight to the left, and wrapped itself around a signpost, destroying the chute. From these tests, it's clear that the O-ring used to inhibit the chute from popping open is an absolute necessity, but it'll take more testing to see where the upper limit of the chute's strength is. My goal over the past few months has been to build a rocket that's reliable, recoverable, and reusable. I plan on using this rocket as a platform for several experiments later this year. I'm hoping that this prototype rocket will be that platform, but first, it needs a name. Just as Von Braun had Punamunde and Goddard had Roswell, New Mexico, this little patch of desert near the Mexican border has been my launch site for the past 10 years, so it only seems fitting to call the rocket the Coyote Rocket. The rocket's going to take off using a K450 engine with a blast tube. Then 20 seconds later, the piston will actuate, releasing the parachute. Where is it? It's pulling up. I the wind is pulling up. I don't know. And that was the fate of Coyote Prototype number one. We had five people watching the rocket and no one knew where it went. We never saw the parachute or heard the rocket come down. It became clear when I looked at the video of the launch that something was wrong. The speed of the launch was dramatically slower than the November flights. The blast tube must be generating huge friction losses for the engine. A static test of the K450 with a blast tube confirmed this. The K450 with the blast tube had a 19% reduction in power output. Putting the blast tube at the end of the nozzle may successfully move the center of gravity forward in the rocket, but the added weight of the tube and the high friction losses to the engine seem to be the final nail in the blast tube coffin.